Episode three of season two of Use It or Lose It. We are back in Bloemfontein with two extremely special superstars. We had to do them together because they're basically inseparable. Ruan Pinar and Franz Stein. Three World Cups won between them. Yes, another underachievers. How's it, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good, thanks, Johnny. No, thank good you. Johnny, it's guys. good to see you. Yeah, <laughs> it's good to see you. Yeah, you still got your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't no, do that nothing. because we need yeah. to. Just exactly. we want it. It's easier. Yeah, it's tough. I've got, I've got yeah. no choice, really. Eh? Yeah, no, no it, choice. It, it, no, no, no choice. Well. Well. Listen, it's guys. Better. Full circle. Back in Bloemfontein. Close mm. to family and friends. Is guys still enjoying it? Obviously, yeah. I think the question we all want to know later on is how is it training again without anywhere to play? But for the moment, the family, everyone settled in nicely. You go. <laughs> No, I think for me, it's, uh, personally, it's nice. It's close to the farm. Uh, um, and, and the people here um, really welcomed us with open arms. Um, we're enjoying it. Um, and being with Pine at, at this last stage of our careers is really special. Last stage meaning another three to four no, years, right? Maybe for him. Maybe for him. Another two years, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, you, you just turned 34, Franz. I mean, for many people, you're still like the 20-year-old and that won the World Cup in 07. Yeah, now suddenly I, you're the... I used to give you, you shit when you were like uh, 28, so I mean, <laughs> now we already passed it. So. The problem is when you saw John run at 28, everyone was giving him shit for moving around like that. Huh? <laughs> so, so when you guys, you obviously went to school, yeah. Um, was it always kind of the dream to, to eventually finish a career here in, in Bloom? Obviously, you had a hugely successful careers at the Sharks, but, uh, but was that kind of... Because you've, you've, you've kind of moved together. Mm. Sharks, Montpellier... I think for me a little bit more than him. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if, yeah. if you thought you would be here. Uh, yeah, but, I, yeah uh, I, I moved to the Sharks and freaking enjoyed Durban so much and playing for the Sharks. And it was a big move for me to then go overseas. Then I had seven wonderful years with Ulster, had a quick stint in France, but never thought I'll be back in Bloom. Um, so yeah, I must say it's nice to be back where it all started, where you went to school, sort of grew up, and um, yeah, nice to spend some more time with the and, and, parents. And talk about the, the Ulster farewell, because you've got an amazing farewell, but it, it was, a, you know, not a lot of people know the situation, why you had to leave, because yeah. they did everything in their power to keep you, but then yeah. you, you were forced to leave. Yeah, yeah sort of, uh, David Nisifora sort of is the rugby program, program in Ireland, and he just felt that Ulster isn't bringing any young nines through the system, and I was sort of in the way of that. Yeah, and, yeah Cooney, I had to move. Was yeah. Cooney, Cooney was coming through. Then. He was, no, he was at Connaught. At the, Connaught he, and I think he, he moved started at Leinster, yeah. went to Connaught, and then yeah, I moved. I had to move on, and yeah, thankfully, yeah, or maybe not, went to France where, where um, you know, Bismarck and Yanni and yeah. France, he was, so there's lots of South Africans, but it was sad. I was sort of planning on ending my career. There's a, there's a lot career. of old grey schoolboys. Yeah, yeah. No, it was an yeah, interesting time in France. I must say, it better times in, in Durban and, and Ulster, but... Interesting times in France or interesting times with, with France? No, uh, in France. With France. <laughs> in France and, and with and France. France. <laughs> it's always interesting with France. Hey, but I don't yeah. want to miss out on this because you know we've got this new feature um, um, called Fan Favourites, um, sponsored by Vodacom, because you, you mentioned it now, uh, uh, France. Um, just just press, press play there for us. Up top there. Toe jy begin het, um, om spring ook rugby te speel, um, was jy baie jonk en jy het gereeld in onderhoude verwijs na legende soos Kobus Biese en, en ander mense wat onderhoude doen as oom. Um, hoeveel van die jong rugby spelers al buiten um, dra die selfde sentiment en noem jou oom as jy by jou oefening aankom en hoe is jou gevoel daar oor? Lekker! Lekker! Ja, I, I think uh, we spoke about it the other day, I can't yeah. take it when, when 19 year olds don't call Pani oom, you know, yeah. so, because well, Pani is yeah. already older. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, no, I, I, uh, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. It, it, it goes quickly, eh? Especially oh. when, like, you're in Pine's case and he's, I mean, he's older than half the coaching staff. You know? <laughs> oh, good stuff. It's right, the yeah. realisation It's all good. You sit there, with eh? the coach and yeah. with the players, but, yeah. look, we've got a great group of players here. I must say, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's been tough times here in Bloemfontein. We haven't played a lot of rugby the last 12 months. 
Um, our future is uncertain, but uh, yeah, we've got a great bunch of guys. I think, I think we still behave like 20 year olds, or, or no, we not, but. He's my handbreak. Yeah. Like, try the, we can't even look at those. We <laughs> like, must be kick yeah. But it's difficult, but, um, we never, we never seem to grow up. It doesn't matter. I mean, no. I'm 40. Yeah. yeah it's, it's old. That's very You really old. need to say that out loud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but I'm, I'm still looking good, eh? Oh, you've oh, still got yeah, really? so. you look yeah, good when you sit guys, down. As soon you. as you start walking, troubles start yeah. to appear. Guys, where did it start for you? Yeah, in Bloom, at Grey. It, it's just a Grey's just a, a feeding ground for professionals and, and, and Springboks over the years. Do you feel it's you know you guys really got a, a edge in terms of you know what, what you experienced at, at Grey? No, I think because there's not many big schools in the free state, so most good sportsmen tend to come to Great College. And I think the tradition, I think the same with you guys going to Chimis, I think it's the same. Like you've, you've, uh, you get into a, into a, a school where there's so many traditions and so many great people that's gone before you. And I think obviously rugby is always in the free state. I think that's what everyone loves. That's what you want to do. And you sort of get, get engraved and into doing that as well. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I really enjoyed my time there. I managed to play with a lot of great players in the same year. Bismarck was the same year as me, Joe Peterson. So, um, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I really had a good time time in great college. I think it's not all about rugby, but um, obviously it is an important part of, yeah. of the school. But, um, yeah, great memories. Um, made a lot of great friends, so it's, you know, it's been good. Good. We, it's, um, it's not often we sit there where you know, Paul Jones just had a recent victory over Gray. It's it's funny you should mention that yeah. because uh, I've got I've got two more videos for you. And I mean, I never I never got I never played against Gray when uh, that maybe shows how old I am. I actually played against him on a 16 week, but never at yeah. a yeah. 19 level. No. Yeah, and you never no. played against Jim, eh? and he, did you? I think under 16 we did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the Paul Jim week there, eh? Yeah, I think normally we toured. We lost quite comfortably. But there's there. actually a... So... Hi, Franz. Uh, it's, it's, Franz, just take the call. No, we just use phone. Is it your wife? Um, you want to take the call oh, from your wife first? Sorry. No, you can't oh, say no. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. okay. Yeah. It's my wife. Yeah. Okay, she can I'll be on the show. She can oh, be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Play again. Oh, there are certain games in your life that you always will remember as a fantastic game and a good game. And then there are a few games. When you play for Grey College, play for the Springboks and uh, play for Free State, there are a few games that you don't, don't want to remember. Uh, I have experience of that 2004. You played for Grey College on Bluefontein against Paul Ruiz. I was sitting in the pavilion. <laughs> Tell us what happened on that day. <laughs> okay, oh, nobody mentioned it. It's not for us. It's a tiered stop. It's a tiered, yeah. It's a tiered stop, but also a former Springbok captain. captain. But before you answer that, so think about it, uh, Francie, and, and, and sorry, guys, but I mean... Hello, everyone, Pinar. I'm Dion Salman from Paul Gymnasium, <laughs> and I would like to ask you the following question. What do you think about Paul Gymnasium beating Grey College? Come on, man. What, what <laughs> question no, is so, that? So, no, it's, it, obviously, he's, he's just a and it doesn't happen that often. Mm. But the school rivalry is, is, is yeah. strong. And you can so kind of touch on that and, and kind of, I don't know what he's referring to, the other game. I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened in 2004. <sighs> what? Yes, <laughs> Was it a bad experience? No, not. Uh, uh, so I was kicking bad the whole day. Uh, and... We got a penalty on that side, on the 15 meter line, on the 22. Yeah. And I quick tapped and went for the corner and somebody tackled me out on the corner. Okay. And we lost by two points. Damn it. So, um, yeah. No, no, but no. that guy that tackled you, can you remember who it was? No. He didn't win two World Cups, did he? <laughs> no. So it didn't, it didn't turn no, out but, too badly. Um, you, must, you must remember, so when, when, I, uh, when I got into grey, uh, there was that story that Gray never lost in, in 50 years. Or yeah. long. I don't even know how long. That was a massive thing when I was at school. So we went to Gray PE, and I also played like Pony said. I, I was standard nine, and we played. I played with Heinzi and Richard Stachis yes. was Lucy's. Yeah. 
Uh, so we had a big team and we went there and we lost for the first time in, like I said, a century or whatever. <laughs> so um, it was quite massive. So uh, from there, losing at Grey wasn't fun. Yeah. Um, and it's still not acceptable, I think. But I mean, you win some, you lose some. That's uh, part of life. Yeah. Yeah, I think schoolboy rugby is sort of almost a professional setup yeah, now. If you case. listen, and I don't know if I completely agree with agree it. with yeah. it because I think you still, I think you lose that enjoyment factor which yeah. schoolboy rugby brings, and you make so many great friends and all the trips and the tours you go on. No. and it's sort of so professional and competitive now, and um, so I don't know if I completely agree with it, but. Again, I think that's probably... But like, but like on Francis' point, you know, he took a chance. He took a, That's what he wanted the schoolboy yeah. to no. do. I mean, I remember loving to... I mean, I had to have a chip kick every single game I played, no. right? Whether they yeah. came off or not, probably not. But no. I like you know, how I you say chip kick and not chip and chase. You don't, yeah, for other guys to chase. <laughs> I was never fast enough to get to uh, the, the chip kick. But yeah. like, I agree with you. I mean, it's so intense. Look, the no. quality is nice and it's nice no. for us to see it on television. But I think maybe the emphasis for the boys should be more on enjoyment than yeah, it is yeah. actually to... Yeah. And honest, it's a lot of pressure as well. Yeah. Most of the people, that's probably the highest level of rugby they'll ever play. Ever play yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I've got a story. We play at Montpellier, Vin Cotter is our coach. Yeah. And Point and Goose used to do chip kicks from the O22, but then it's more like a Take semi mistakes, up and under yeah. or semi yeah. long kick. It's, it lands in like the middle. In yeah, yeah, like yeah. a... Nothing kick. And somebody picks it up and they run through and they score under the post and I'm over there, I was chasing on the outside. I'm walking back and I'm doing him and Goosey. I'm like, hey, you guys, well done. <laughs> well done like that. So the Monday I got into, into, <laughs> uh, into the club and, and then, you, you know how it is when you got a hearing at IRB or whatever, yeah, they've yeah. got all these cameras, these screens and Clips. they rewind and go for it. Yes. 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 Then you so, do it, then you do it. <laughs> yeah. So he calls me in and he's like, what are you thinking? So all these shows is me walking back, <laughs> clapping hands, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm just actually giving them shit, but they tried it a lot, you know. Yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. the first time it happened. So it was well. a sarcastic yeah. clap, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, that really worked. And from there, I, I, I think that really was play. my last go for it. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, and then uh, from there, I also didn't play a lot. Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, you know, you, you speak about... Um, and and I totally agree. Eh? The the professionalism within within in, in rugby in South Africa. There's an element to it that's really good mm. to be able to build a pipeline. To you know, yeah. again, all four of us, Paul Gymnasium, Grey College. You know, we became Springboks. It, it it's certainly a stepping stone. But there's a plethora. How's that for a word? Yes, a I, plethora. What does that mean? Of, <laughs> I don't know what it of, means. of 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 I'm people like, that yeah. that never that never make it. You yeah. know. Um, and it's about building the kids sort of holistically where it, it's kind of on the edge at the moment. But there's, there's, there's a lot of value as well to, to mm. be in a, in a rugby-rich school with history mm. and heritage. Mm. And, um, so it's not, not... Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. we were all immersed by it. Eh? Like, yeah. we wanted to you know, do the best we can for our first teams. But mm. I still think at our level where we were, where we were at school, our age, like we had a bit more fun, mm. you know, which I want to see. But... We can't down the system for producing yeah, well, talent and more talent. But yeah. I st still score at school. Now you see they've got the, if they go to the edge, they've got the three, yeah, three yeah. forwards. Two. So structured. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like we play at the moment, you know. I don't really think that's the, yeah. what I mean. But you have to feel sorry for them now with this whole COVID thing and not having played as much as they would have liked See, because be, like you said that's the all for some boys that's going to be the ultimate there, there would be yeah. guys now that's like under 20 at a union who yeah. hasn't played for nearly three years yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Tough, just ridiculous yeah. the experience of playing abroad um france you obviously experienced japan france um two stints in france yeah, yeah two stints in in france why did you prefer france so much was it all in the name <laughs> one of his jokes. That's one of his jokes. Is that one of the jokes? No, 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 there was plans and stuff, and it, it was nice for me. But then stuff, you get to a rich club, and as soon as stuff starts going bad, they don't sort the, the stuff out. They just fire people and get new guys in. 
we go to a team, our, our end of function, like a team barbecue. And then the owner comes down and just say, PSP, she done, go. Stuff like yeah. that. Then you still have yeah. two years. So, so, like I said, my first three seasons at, at racing was special and I wouldn't take it back. But I think um, I, I saw a different side of the French when I went back to Montpellier. Yeah. Yeah. And Piney, the, I mean, you touched on it already and Scala touched on it, your, your experience at Ulster. Mm. I mean, you, you were absolute cult hero. You know, I think it's the first time ever where the, the whole club wants the player to stay and then you unfortunately have to leave you because to of leave. Yeah. technicalities in a, in a way. Um, yeah. you, you absolutely loved it there. Yeah, it was brilliant. I must say, I never, I never thought I'll enjoy it that much. And yeah. it was tough to leave the Sharks. We had a really good team. We were always competitive and I loved Urban. It was a great lifestyle. And then to go from 40 degrees to minus five and, <laughs> and it's dark and miserable and yeah, you hardly yeah. see the sun. It was, it was, you know, it was a massive uh, step in my mommy. I remember my mommy said, are you going to, to Belfast? I said, yes. you know, it's uh, one of the most dangerous places in the world. Yeah. I was like, listen, I'm from South Africa. From Africa. Said, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but um, no, it's, I, I think apart from the rugby, the people, it's yeah. just brilliant in the culture. I must say, you played with in Munster yeah. for, but it was, yeah, you know, I I loved it. I loved it. Francie, the Japanese experience. My first year was quite tough. I didn't uh, enjoy it at all. Uh, when I got there, uh, we just had a newborn. <clears throat> in that first, uh, we went. Uh, she was six months or whatever. Then the you're the only person to blame for that. Eh? <laughs> yeah. And then the second one was born there yeah. in that same. So it was quite a tough. Yeah. Um, so my first year was bad, I didn't know what I was doing there, but then my second year was really one of my best seasons I ever had with the club, you know. Yeah. I would go back there any, we not went, now. We went too far from him, we were just down the road, yeah. eh? Yeah. 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 I enjoyed it. Yeah. Actually I had Francie over for a little bry there one afternoon. Yeah. Plenty of beers and brandy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he needed it. He needed it, yeah. yeah. Well, he lost, he lost about 10 k's. I thought, Francie, <laughs> Yes, we were on a lot of years. <laughs> Guys, let's let's talk a bit of uh, World Cup, um, and and France, especially with you now, the the experience of 07 and and what was achieved there, and then 2019 again. Did you did you ever think that would be possible? No, not at the stage that not in 2019. No, I didn't even think I would ever go there again. After yeah. Heineken, I didn't. I thought it was the end. But I mean, <coughs> I was lucky. At the right time, at the right place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think that would be luck. Eh? I've got a um, I've got another question actually on that. Now I need to pick the right one. France in 07. Uh, did you ever think that you would play in a World Cup final again? And what was it like winning in 2019? Uh, what was the difference between the two experiences? Yeah, I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> you can't answer that. It was different. <laughs> yeah. Because I was. 19 or 20, I didn't give a crap about nobody. I just wanted to play and whatever. And then you get where I'm 32 and I know that I'm not going to play yeah, another, another one. one. Yeah. You know? So, <laughs> no, <Nah, laughs> no, I don't think so. But I mean, you understand. So, the, And then comparing the two, you can't. It's two different teams, two different eras. Oh, no, I can't. And finally, th thinking back of 07 and... Yeah, I think, like he said, he's special. I was, I think, 22, 23 at that stage, and you just want to be part of it, and you play anywhere. Do you think? Do you think it's like, can you not remember what He was 23. He was 23. So, um, no, great memories, yeah. obviously. Um, sort of got into the squad the year before that and never really thought of the World Cup. You know, you just wanted to be a part yeah. of it and sort of make your debut. And, get going so um yeah i think it was a brilliant seven weeks i think that was one of the best was i was it's like paris was brilliant yeah the whole experience was was yeah. great so the hotels in paris it's brilliant. yeah, yeah very Jeez. Nice. world cups are special yes indeed we we experienced that but lions Oof. also pretty special mm. lions coming up this year francie um obviously played in 09 pine played in 09 there's a possibility that both of you guys can actually feature in a test match maybe, against them. You know, that will be, a lot of guys have featured against them twice, like playing for the Sharks and then playing for the Box. 
That would be another first, wouldn't it, John? It will. Uh, Francie, do you know the, the record? With, so in the professional era, <clears throat> well, as far as we've researched, Research. tried to research, only George Smith has played oh. in two Lions series, okay? Now, he's not South African. Yeah. So you can also not only be the... You could be the only one to have played in two rugby... Win two Rugby World Cups, and play in two, two Lions series. series. So think about that. We've actually got a video on that as well, Scala. Okay. That just pre press that one there. It's the for point. Yeah. Hi, Franz. Skulk here with the Lions tour coming up. Is there any chance that you'll be making history and facing them for the second time? Well, you don't select the side, do you? No. That's a tough thing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> No. But I mean, that must excite you. I mean, for someone that has achieved so much, to, to still have something like that, the carrot, to, um, to hopefully be part of that? Uh, that. That was one of the biggest things that uh, got me to come back to, to South Africa. Well, I was, I'm still trying to get to that squad, so you never know what's going to happen later on or when they pick the squad or when they pick the teams, but I mean, yeah. I'll try, I'll try my best to get there. I think Francie is very modest. I think Francie should have played 100 tests for South Africa. You managed to do it. I think if he didn't yeah. throw a few bottles around in meetings <laughs> back in his younger <laughs> days, he would have been there. Yeah. So I think it's a just reward for Francie to be, yeah. to be one of the two guys with us. <coughs> you have two World Cup medals and also to be involved with two, so. Jeez, guys, and the opportunity to see the Springboks play again. Oh. I mean, we're starving. I mean, we're as fans. And like fans, a... here we need as fans. fans. We, we it's need terrible to... when you're tired and you don't hear anything. You can't look at anybody. Uh, yeah. So mm. is, is it like a training session? Yeah. Like a training he breathes session. heavy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, watched, I've watched a few games of you guys playing live, and then every now and then I go, like, like a Francie, go find me. You guys immediately look up, but that's how quiet it is. Yeah. You can actually hear my and voice. And the trouble is when you swear at the ref, <laughs> yeah. they hear you. Immediately, yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, that's you know a, that's what, a problem. What's the learning? Moment. You know what's the learning through that? Don't swear at the ref. <laughs> you sound like a no, cat. It, it, it takes five minutes, then you lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in fact, it's tough. Luckily, it like, the quality of the referees has improved markedly. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, we want to we want to get a bit more. We want to get a bit more. Talk about the off-field stuff as well, the social stuff, more fun stuff. But uh, this. This one, again, you can look at both, Piney. Yes. Um, from Tien's again there, press that one, and then the one after that. Hi, Rowan. From Tien's Stofberg is on. Uh, many years ago, uh, myself and your dad played against the Lions. Bluefontein, 1980. What a fantastic game the Springboks had, and your father scored one of the most beautiful tries on that day. I'm sure there's a photograph of him standing at the at the score line, holding the ball in the air. How did it feel for you to see him standing there, Springbok jersey, scored a try against the Lions? And uh, how did you look up to that? Thanks so much. Um, yeah, hold, hold that okay. thought and look at it. Uh, just clean point. I don't know. Despite being ex Springbok's son, uh, is it an advantage or extra pressure? Uh, and also, um, how does it influence uh, you with your son? Yeah, I think to answer the first question, I, I wasn't born in 1980, but I remember my dad had... <laughs> None of us yeah, were. Yeah. He had a massive collection of tapes of the 70s and 80s, so I used to, on a daily basis, watch those games, the Springbok Saga, you yes, probably like, know as yeah. well, and you watch the Lions series, and I remember my... I think it was this corner, my dad, who's still the old stadium, I think it was this corner, and... That's why we decided to say... Yeah, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> my dad will be very happy. So, um, and... And my dad is a very modest, quiet guy, and he, I think for some reason he lifted the ball up and it's against his morals or whatever. Mm -hmm. He never used to celebrate when he scored tries. He just jogged back. And I think just the occasion got to him and scoring a try against the Lions. So I think obviously brings brings back a lot of, of great memories watching those tapes and seeing Gary Germes as Donny Gerber. That was a brilliant Springbok team back yeah. in the 80s. And I think then again, the second question, Skull, I think maybe the same for you. Um, my dad never put pressure on me, never said play rugby or whatever. That was my own. I fell in love with the game from an early age. But you did feel a little bit of pressure at some stage. I always felt I needed to be the fittest guy or 
train the hardest because you sometimes someone will say, listen, he made the Kramnik team because of your dad's KCP yeah. yeah. And deep inside, I knew I worked hard and I felt that I was the best. So you got a bit of that, but I think that slowly disappeared as you got older and you sort of forget about all those comments. But yeah, I think from my parents' side, there's, there was never any pressure to play rugby or so. I think I just, for some reason, always, always enjoyed rugby as well. So. Yeah, and it's special, eh? No, I mean, it's so great nice to, to follow. I mean, for both yeah. of you to, yeah. to be, yeah. you know, father and son Springboks, it's it's yeah. like. And it's special at my dad's house. We framed my first Test match jersey in Derby's with his yes. with his one. So no, it's, I mean, stuff like that, you know, to share that with your old man is versus special. Scotland in Durban. No, I uh, New Zealand in Pretoria. Oh. So you can't even remember those things. I think my first touch, Dan Carter put up a. Uh, I went on at fullback. Oh, 2006, yeah, yeah there we I go. I went yeah, up yeah, okay. at fullback and he kicked a spiral bomb. Oh dear. <laughs> and I saw Mama, Ma Anoni chasing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was scared. Yeah. I managed to catch, catch it, it, avoid it, got the pass away. Yeah. So yeah. thankfully. The spiral bomb has disappeared, but, um, but that is a horrible thing now. to catch. And that thing just moves everywhere. Yeah. And then, I don't know what was as scary as the spiral bomb or, or Ma Anoni chasing you, yeah. but um, thankfully caught it, got away. and. Um, there were some yeah. scary people when we started. There yeah. were some scary people. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, scary people, and you can you can talk about who, who's the scariest. But I mean, when when we watch rugby now, when we watch you guys play, like, you're the yeah. scary people. I, I mean, know. I don't think you know if you look at some of those forwards at the moment. Yeah. I don't think they were that we, big. We met when, up with the guys after that 19 World Cup win. And we walked in there, and all of us were like, Oof, I'm so glad I didn't yeah. play against this box. <laughs> this, this looks messy, eh? Yeah. You spoke about playing at fullback, uh, uh, Piney. And it's nice how all our fan favorite videos fits oh. into the conversation here. Hi, guys. My name is Louis. Uh, my question to Ruan is, Ruan, if you weren't a uh, scrum off, would you have preferred to be a fly off or a fullback for your whole career? And my question to France is, France, what's your favorite cheese? <laughs> cheese? Yeah, what's your favorite cheese? <laughs> That's very random. Any cheese. Yeah. <laughs> any, any, any cheese. cheese. Yeah. Uh, no. Favorite you? position? No, I think probably fly off. I, I enjoy, I think that's a part of Nine you enjoy because you're involved yeah. with the player a lot in decision making and stuff. I, I think probably I wasn't never quick enough. I played a few test matches at 15. I don't know how I got there, but anyway, yeah. um, I guess, yeah, 10 probably. I, I don't mind playing 10. I can remember the one game was against England where you guys ended up, you were at fullback and you were at wing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seven. Oh, seven, yeah. Oh, 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 seven. Yeah. yeah, I think, um, what's the fly of England played? Uh, Toby Flood. Flood, yeah. He kicked the ball across and I managed to catch it. Yeah, and then he yeah. scored the try. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and again on the subject. <laughs> I am mute. <laughs> um, did you ever play against James Hook? interview's done. <laughs> um, uh. Can you remember what position France made his debut at for the box? France Stan? Yeah. <laughs> the one sitting next to you. Wing. Yeah. yeah, wing against o Ireland. O six at the old Lansdowne. Yeah, at the old Lansdowne. We played with those old jerseys. Mm. Brian, yeah. Brian, Brian played 13. 13, yeah. Mm. We got that was a good there. experiment. Oh. We got smashed. Yeah. Yeah. The funny yeah. thing was, me, <laughs> Yaku, and Bevan. Yes, yeah. that's it. Young, uh, I remember Andre Pretorius played at 10, and yes. we, they, there was a, quite a win that evening. Oh. And um, okay. we hardly got out of our half. And right. the second half, when they played against the wind, Ronan Agar was spiraling that thing like yeah. we were asking for his left. After, yeah. Yeah. How it can was, he kick yes. this one bounce out? Yeah. Can't but he it. was probably the best of that day, like the lowest. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about old Glacey Peanuts going through the, mm. through the line there. Um, so it's a warm mess, dear Botter. We got a very interesting question from this young lady. How's it, France and Ruan? Um, I'm Kubar, massive fan. I would like to ask if the two of you had to have a dance off, who would win and will you show us your moves? As we gaan so keen, dan zal ik hem vat, denk ik. Maar ik denk Pony is in met die movies. Ja, hij is wel in die movies. Dan gaan we ons een baie drink vir my om los te dansen. 
Is that a challenge? Yeah, I saw myself <laughs> back. My other definitely feel no. Well, we're, <laughs> well we're, going, we're going for a little dinner after this. Oh, so depending where the dinner goes, we're oh, going to have a little dance off later. Yeah. Yeah. Money no, no, no. There's actually no. so much we can still discuss uh, about your careers and off the field stuff as well, eh? But we're kind of yes. running out of time and, we're, and running, it's, it's, we're running out of sunlight. And it's cold. It is cold, yeah. eh? Guys, the show won't be the same without the one segment that we have. Um, and it's, it's called Bad Jokes. Now, I don't know why they call it Bad Jokes because I think they're actually pretty good. Um, but we're going to do that now. And how it works... Do you guys know how it works? I'm going to tell you a joke. You, five you laugh jokes. and we look at you. Yeah. <laughs> he explains five to jokes. us what the joke five was. Five jokes. And you try not to laugh. Okay. okay. But don't be too good at it. Because <laughs> if you, give, give, some, job, <laughs> give us some good ones, please. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm feeling confident about this one. I know it's very cold because I'm going to, I want to make you feel warm inside, warm and fuzzy <laughs> with my jokes, okay? So five jokes of skulk. You're on your own, yeah? Like so many times before, you're yeah. taking on a team by yourself. No problem. You know, more than one No guy. problem. I've got it. Back you, buddy. Thank you. Just be as terrible as always and I okay. should work. So the two of you together, so if one laughs, then it's no point. And then Skull gets the point. Because there's a point system, scoring system, and then there's a big prize to win at the end. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> you ready for yeah. bad jokes? What kind of tea is hard to swallow? Can I answer that? No. Reality. Yeah, I can't even cock it. Reality. Yeah, you're listening there, you're listening there. Take it in, take it in. I was only, I don't know, okay, I was only here. You're just going to like a long time. You're not going to die. 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 Ah, okay. Straight face. Okay. Why don't, din why don't dinosaurs talk? Because they're dead. Are we going to, John's going to invite you on the show every you week. You guys are back. Yeah. Permanently. Hey, um, maybe you should replace Cock. Um, <laughs> no, Just for the joke section. I can't. Anytime. I can't. Because we're in it together. Skok and me. I love Skok. Thank you, John. What's green and has wheels? Grass. I lied about the wheels. But the okay, I laugh for all the time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> two one. Skull glass. Two one. Yeah, okay. Okay. Wow. Guys, I think the, this is the best bad joke ever. Ever. You laugh more. Okay, here we go. Number four. Two to one, okay? You want to hear two short jokes and a long joke? Hmm? Joke, joke, joke! <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got Francie. Francie's your okay. man. And the cameraman. Is it your last year now? Yeah, how is it? Uh, how is it? Okay. Last joke, joke, joke. Okay, <clears throat> guys. My last one. I, one. This, this was my, actually my best one. The other four, I, I think I exceeded all expectations. Whew, okay. <clears throat> now, this is brought to you by DHL, the bad jokes, okay? Because it's all about the delivery. Mm -hmm. And DHL also delivers. Okay, that's not even a joke. That's, that's the reality. <laughs> ah. Two cows are grazing in the field, okay? One says to the other, you ever worry about that mad cow disease? The other cow says, why would I care? I'm a helicopter. <laughs> That's actually the best one you've had on the best show one. <laughs> 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 Okay, it's a draw. Yo, I went, you let them a yell yard for That's my whole year, mate. Thanks so much, eh? Great seeing you guys again. Fancy, we would love to see you in that 
Bok jersey for the Lions series. Thanks, Tom. Run, we'd like to see you play against the Lions, which is also no, a possibility. No. Yeah. We haven't played for 12 months, so we'll yeah. see. And we'd love to see you play for another three years for the Cheetahs. You just renewed for another three years, right? Just go, no. to, go to, yeah. to 40. Yeah, just go to 40. It's you think that's yeah. the magical um, No, I, I still enjoy it, Johnny, as long as you still have that and you wake up in the mornings. Yeah. And you enjoy it, then yeah, you'll go as long as you can. Listen, guys, and thank you very much for your time. I know it's Thanks. cold, but we've got to stick you for a dinner. Yeah. And there's a thank few other board. boys from Bloemfontein joining us as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be a good evening, but thank you very much. And thanks for letting John feel better for yes. last year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, like it's like also, the first time ever. No, thanks a lot, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in again. Use it or lose it. Please do su subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. And that's it. And like us. Like us on Facebook. But more importantly, the WhatsApp number, send in those videos. videos. You can be part of the show like all these guys that took part in asking Ruan Pinar and Florence Stein some questions. So, lacquer, Bloomies out. <laughs>